Hi, I'm Jeff Strang from New Zealand Fishing World and we're here at a secret spot not too far from the Auckland CBD doing a bit of shore based fishing this morning. So what, our, what we're attempting to do is catch a few snapper on soft bait and, so, and salt fly straight off the beach. We got here at 7 o'clock in the morning, it was dead on low tide at first light. We did catch a couple of fish on the soft baits in the first couple of casts and one on the salt fly. Tide's just starting to pick up so we're getting a bit organised for a bite that should pick up in about 20 minutes. What I've got to keep things going and, and to make it a bit more entertaining for us is a surf rod spike with a burly bomb attached to it on a float. I'm going to walk out a couple of metres, get that going. It's going to get the sprats here, probably get a few eagle rays and that sort of thing around so it should be quite nice footage and uh, hopefully the snapper will come on the bite for us. So let's see how we go. Now when you're looking for a spot to do this sort of fishing, this sort of shore based fishing, there are a few things to think about before you go. One is, what's the access like? You really don't want to be walking through mud flats of any sort of real depth for too long. You know, you don't want to get stuck in the mud. It does happen, particularly in the Manukau and the upper areas of the wider matter, so you've got to watch that. This spot's got a really easy walk in. We barely got our feet wet. Another thing to really think about is food. It's all about food. Yes, we're in a harbour. Yes, there'll be natural food, but some harbours have got more food in them than the others. This one, as you can see, is completely covered in cockle and puppy shells. It's a fantastic food source, straight off the bat. And actually, we've already got mullet things swimming around our little burly pot there, so not particularly surprising. Another thing to look for are holes in the sand and in the mud. These are indications that fish have been foraging as the tides come up, looking, trying to dig up worms and crustaceans to eat, and uh, they're a really good sign for snapper. In fact, as you walk along this piece of beach, there are two spots that really stand out as having holes in the sand one that we're fishing on right here and uh, another spot a little bit closer to the entrance. Um, we might try that spot later on if we don't do any good here. Up you go. That's great. Well, that was a really interesting morning. Um, you know, we caught a few quite nice fish like these. It, it wasn't frenetic like it's been here in the past. But you know, that's a really solid fish. So, what are the learnings? We turned up at seven o'clock right on the change of tide, which was dead low. The light was obviously perfect. We got fish straight away. We got the burly trail going. We had a couple more. We actually got bigger fish once the burly trail started going. There were plenty of mullet. There was eagle rays swimming around. We found the spot where the snapper had been digging in the mud a little bit. Gave us a bit of an indication that they were here. It's a really fun session. So we were fishing ultralight soft baits, curly tail soft baits. They were doing a lot better than the salt fly, not to be surprised by that. We were also fishing um, salt fly. I was using a pink and white clouser, which I guess you could call kind of a prawn imitation. Lots and lots of fun. So accessible, like I say, probably 30 minutes drive to the CBD from here and, uh, and a 15 minute walk out and great spot. I reckon you'd do a trip like this. You know, by the, as long as you own your rods and reels, it'd probably cost you about 10 bucks in gas and another ten dollars in soft baits at the max and a bit of burley so there you go call it 30 bucks cheap morning out fishing breakfast is well and truly sorted we had fresh coffee I suppose we better get back to the office then cheers